In this video, I'll be talking about the definite integral. Here's an example of a definite integral, a general form. The integral of f of x dx taken from a to b. So, commonly this is thought of as the area under the curve. The definite integral is oftentimes used to find the area under a curve. So I'll write area under the curve from, from point A to B. And I'll sketch a little uh, picture of what I'm talking about. So if I have, I'll just talk about the, uh, the first quadrant here, and I've got some curve, f of x. And I've got this point A and this point B, then this integral that we have shown above would find this area, all of this area. That's what this integral is, is finding. Now, that is, that's the positive area, of course, and it's generally thought of as the area under the curve. However, if you had a a function that went under the curve, went under the x-axis at some point, and this was my a and this is my b, then this area, area of course is always positive, but the integral that you get would be a negative number. So you have to pay attention to the question if it's asking for the area specifically. You have to look to see if the function goes below the x-axis. And, uh, and then just take the absolute value of that integral because the integral evaluated, evaluated of this function, the integral would be negative because it's, because it's under the x-axis. But still, we, we generally think of this as the area under the curve. That's just kind of the, the way um, the integral is, is thought to be used. Okay, let's talk about some other properties of, of the definite integral. And we have the sum property, and that is if we have the integral from a to b of f of x dx plus another integral a to b of g of x dx, well, you can combine those. That, that equals the integral from a to b of f of x plus g of x. And you can also split those apart if it started being subbed and uh, summed, and then you could actually split those apart. So what this is, all this is saying is kind of intuitive. It's saying you can add two areas. So if I put f of x in, in blue here, and I put g of x in yellow, and I've got my points a to b, then we could draw a third curve to make it f plus g, or f of x plus g of x. And we could say this, this area in purple would equal the sum of the area under the blue and under the yellow. So this is, this is uh, f of x and this is g of x area. And if we sum to those, then we would get this larger area, all of this. Okay, so, so that makes sense and it's, it's uh, it's it's intuitive. The other then the other way we can we can do that is subtracting it. We can say the difference of these two. So if we have the difference, that is uh, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, and you subtract the integral from a to b of g of x dx, then that will equal the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. 
dx. So that makes sense. Looking on this same picture over here, we could imagine uh, subtracting g of x. I'll, I'll sketch a little one here. So again, using f of x in blue and g of x in yellow. Then I could draw in purple f of x minus g of x. So I would be subtracting this, this yellow part off. And, and so f of x would, would come in somewhere. f of x minus g of x would come in down here somewhere. All right. And it's not always going to be below g of x, but in this case, it was. So this area from A to B, the area in the purple, is, is the difference. The difference of the blue area minus the yellow area. Okay, that makes sense. We're just taking a chunk out. It's like in geometry when you, when you have a, a, a rectangle and you're asked to subtract a, a triangle out of it and find the new area. That's, that's really what, what's happening here. Okay. Another one, another property that we want to talk about would be the property of going in the opposite direction. And this one is a little bit less intuitive, but if we have the integral from a to b, f of x dx, that's going to equal the opposite of, negative of, taking that same integral evaluated from b to a is kind of funny to think about but just looking at, at any of these and it's just it's the way the mathematics works out it, it's tough to to visualize what's going on here um, in, in terms of area but saying if we go in this direction from b to a uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like this one it's like turning it upside down and so you're going to get some some negative or in, in other words the opposite of what you would get if you evaluated in the forward direction from A to B. So uh, that's just to show. And, and another thing that, that shows is that this number, this is important to point out, this number B is not necessarily, is not necessarily going to be lower than A. It won't necessarily be greater either. So like this one, A will not necessarily, won't necessarily be, for example, 0 and 5. Uh, you might have a, a 5 and then 0. And it seems kind of weird to be taking the integral in the opposite direction, but, but it's possible mathematically to do that. And um, when you go into further applications, it's actually helpful to be able to take the antiderivative or the, uh, the definite integral in the opposite direction. Let's talk about another property. And I'll talk about... Um, this one is... This one is more intuitive to see. If you take the integral of some function evaluated from a number to that same number, that equals, guess it before I write it, 0. What is the area from one number to itself? Well, I'm, let's write this f of x. And I'm going to take the area from a to a, well, that's the same thing. That is just this line. And a line, mathematically, has no area, volume, or whatnot. It's, it's just a, a mathematical representation. So there is zero area right there. So that's why this works. That's why if you take an integral from one number to itself, you just get an area of zero. Uh, zero. Okay. Um, multiply. This is a neat one. And it, it makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm not even going to write a graph for this one because this one just makes sense from your indefinite integrals. So if you took an integral from A to B and you said uh, something like 2 times, 2 times some function dx, well, you could move that 2 outside the integral, just like an in indefinite integral. So it's um, the integral of twice a function is the same as 2 times an integral of just that function. So there's nothing mind-blowing about that one, but it's very helpful to know. So 
I don't want to just say that it's not important. It's very important. The last one I want to talk about is, is actually very helpful, w again, when you're dealing with some, sometimes some applications, is this, I'll call it the split, very mathematical term, the split. And that is, if you were to, I'm going to draw a graph on this one first, because this is kind of neat to see it graphically. If you have the function f of x again, and you are taking the integral from a to b, you're finding this area here in white. Well, guess what? What if I threw a new number in there? What if I threw in the number c? or the number represented by C. Then if I took the area from A to C and then also took the area or the integral from C to B, well, wouldn't that just be the same as the area from A to B? Yes. Yes, it would. So we'll write that last property that I'll talk about in this video. And that is, if you have, if you want to find the area or the integral, I should say, the integral from a to b of f of x, you can split that up. You can put in some arbitrary number. It doesn't have to be a number in between these two numbers. By the way, it could be zero. It could be something below that or something above that boundary, which is it's kind of funny how it works, but it does work. You can throw in any old number and evaluate this integral from a to some number c as long as you evaluate the second part of that, beginning at that same number, that same number C, and then up to your final boundary B, f of x dx. So I just want to highlight that right here. This, this C, it just has to be the same. So you're beginning at A, ending at B, and stopping at C in the middle, kind of like a little road trip. And you're just stopping off at C for some gas, and then continuing, you're driving the same total distance.